So it's this spice file. And this format is a spice file, so we change from Verilog to spice, and then we run the LBS. And then this time around, we should actually get the normal LVS dialog screens that pop up, which is basically this smiley face. And then that takes care of the caliber. That takes care of the LVS. And again, if you don't have a run set, you should definitely save a run set so you don't have to input the uh, rules in your caliber run directory again. So after you perform DRC and, uh, and LVS, and those are clean, we can now do a parasitic extraction. To do that, you would go to caliber run PEX. For some reason, you actually do have to load a run set for this, uh, for this particular flow to work properly. So um, what you can do is actually, if you go into my particular run set, which is WMFC Helix Project Baseband MFAM ICFB Baseband. Uh, I have a directory called uh, Caliber Files. So what you'll have to do is, um, if once you open up the parasitic extraction, you can copy this run set over, copy that over to your directory. And then you actually use this browser to load up this particular run set. And then uh, what you would do is you would actually leave the PEX rules files alone. This is set properly. What you'll have to change is just change your uh, PEX run directory to your particular directory. So just uh, browse and then find where it is for you. Inputs and outputs you would leave alone. Well, outputs you would, uh, it depends on what kind of parasitic extraction that you're doing. So for the digital flow, uh, very often what we want is just a uh, schematic view. Now, um, earlier if you look at the library manager for this top cell you notice that we have a layout view but we do not have a schematic view um, if you do a parasitic extraction and you set the extraction type to no RC which means you're not extracting any parasitic resistances or capacitances or inductances then you're just getting the transistors which is equivalent to having a base schematic view right here so that's essentially what we're trying to create with this step so you'd set this to no RC, and then, um, yeah, basically you'd uh, leave inputs and outputs alone from, the, from loading the run set. Then you run the PEX. So after your uh, PEX extraction is finished running, you'll get uh, this dialog box to pop up. Now, um, you'll need to change the cell map file. And the type of cell map file that you would reference here depends on what kind of extraction you just performed. So if you go over to the wiki and you click on systems teams over on the left, scroll down to somewhat near the bottom, you'll see a heading called PEX modes. And PEX modes are like the different kinds of uh, parasitic extractions that we can perform. Uh, normally for the digital blocks, uh, we perform no RC LVS in order to generate um, the schematic that can pass LVS once we put all the blocks together. So the one that you'll be using most of the time will be these, uh, these right here. So in this case, this digital.mim file is the cell map file that we would use right here. Then for the caliber view name, what you want to do is you want to change this from caliber to schematic. And 
this step basically just makes it easier in the future to run LVS. Uh, you don't have to like tell Cadence to include uh, caliber views. You can just, Cadence already knows how to work with schematic views. Then for the caliber view type, we're going to change that to schematic. Create terminals, we're going to do create all terminals. And we want device placements to be arrayed. Then you click OK. Now once it finishes, you should get exactly 24 errors. And the number of warnings will just be a lot. And then the bigger the block, the more warnings. But the important thing to pay, uh, to pay in mind is the 24 errors. Then if you go back to your library manager, you'll see that there is now a schematic view. So we want to open that up and zoom in. Then you see that there's tons of transi transistors that have been extracted. And you want to also make sure that all the pins for, uh, for your block have also been extracted properly. Once you have that check, then you can close all of the PEX boxes since we're now done with the parasitic extraction. So now we have a layout that has passed DRC, has passed LVS with the uh, behavioral Verilog, or sorry, the synthesized Verilog from Encounter. Uh, we've just generated a schematic. Um, the last thing to do is to create a symbol uh, so that we can use this particular schematic easily. Create a symbol for these blocks that you've just streamed in. So if you open up the schematic view, you can click on design, create cell view, from cell view. Uh, for this dialog box, you just click OK. And it pops up a box with all the pins for your particular block. Uh, by default, it'll set them all into the uh, top side of the box. Now, if you want to edit it to make it look a little, I guess, more look prettier or more usable, then you don't want all the pins coming up from one side. To actually work with this a little easier, what I would suggest you do is open up a text editor. And if you triple click, you'll uh, select every, all the pins here and you want to copy and paste into your text editor. And then from here you can reorganize, reorganize it however you want. So let's say if I wanted all my right ends on the left side, then I can easily select this copy it and paste into the left pins. Then if I wanted, let's say you start ready on the bottom along with uh, along with reset and all the readouts. Then I can organize it like that, select it, and paste it in. Then um, basically once you've assigned all the pins where you want them to be, then you can click OK. And then uh, this step usually takes a while, so you just wait for it to finish. And then you'll have your symbol view. So here we have our symbol with all of its pins and uh, kind of concludes the cadence flow. Once you have the symbol, then you can repeat this flow for all of your blocks and then start to piece them together.